natural world, different species of birds have developed unique ways of feeding in order to share food resources. They are different in their body structures, songs, as well as flight patterns. Birds are without a doubt the most elegant creatures. Although they arrived on the scene later than mammals, they have dominated the skies with their speed and diversity. After the spring equinox, as the sun gradually moves towards the northern hemisphere and the seasonal winds change directions, many birds embark on their annual migratory journey. Among these large numbers of migratory birds, only a few species will stay in Jinmen to breed. The majority makes a brief stop before they continue their journey northward. In early April, amidst the gentle southern breezes, the clear songs of the blue-tailed bee-eater resound through the lands, among spring mists and green fields. The bee-eaters spend six months of the year in Jinmen. It is here that they engage in courtship, look for breeding grounds, and breed their young. These summer breeding birds of Jinmen fly south in search of warmer climates when the breeding season is over. The plumage of a bird bears testimony to the creativity of the natural world. We humans are captivated by the bird's resplendent feathers and their ability to fly. And the bee-eater is a perfect example of these qualities. The blue-tailed bee-eater is a combination of chestnut brown, green, and blue. The structural blue tint of its wing and tail feathers is not easily eroded and can appear iridescent with the refraction of light, an important detail during courtship displays. The other colors are pigment colors, affected by genes and diet. The blue-tailed bee-eater sports a prominent black eye line. Eye lines serve to absorb strong light, which explains its presence in many species of predatory birds that hunt under the strong glare of sunlight for extended periods of time. These include the black-winged kite, the brown shrike, and the tern. Both the English and Chinese names of the blue-tailed bee-eater indicates that it is an aggressive predator of bees. As a matter of fact, the bee-eater also favors other flying insects like dragonflies, butterflies, cicadas, moths, as well as flies. Very few species have the ability to capture dragonflies or bees in flight. Like the Eurasian hobby, it requires sophisticated flying techniques and calculated maneuvers. The blue-tailed bee-eater likes to perch on branches over open spaces. Once a prey appears, it swings into action to catch it on the wings.
With its strong downturn bill, a blue-tailed bee-eater thrashes up a large insect before devouring it. The indigestible exoskeletons of insects containing large amounts of chitin are regurgitated through pellets by the bee-eater. The blue-tailed bee-eater belongs to the family Meropidae, under the order Coraciforms. The Coraciforms are a group of colorful birds, usually cavity nesters, including the kingfishers, hoopoes, and rollers. The bee-eaters are certainly unique and successful. Their species differentiation is far from simple. There are three genera and 28 species of bee-eaters, all of which are cavity nesters. Given their predilection for bees, it is not surprising to find that their distribution overlaps with that of honeybees mainly in the old continents of Asia, Europe, Africa, and Australia. The vast African continent is home to 18 species of bee-eaters, including the largest and the smallest species. The little bee-eater is only 14 centimeters long, which makes it the smallest bee-eater. Clothed in bright orange and green, it has blue eyebrows and no elongated central tail feathers. They like to hunt from low perches and are often seen resting on protruding branches. Most birds are named after their distinctive appearance, and the white-fronted bee-eater is no exception. A resident species of Africa, the white-fronted bee-eater does not migrate and is mainly found in sub-equatorial regions. It favors habitats of bushes and riverbanks. Research has shown that the white-fronted bee-eaters employ the helper's in-nest strategy during breeding these helpers are usually younger members of the colony. With their assistance, the success rate of the nest is doubled. There is only one species of bee-eater in Australia, the rainbow bee-eater. Very similar in appearance to the blue-tailed bee-eater, they too engage in cooperative breeding. Highly adaptable, they can be found in parks and even private gardens. Contrary to the gregarious nature of most bee-eater species, the mated rainbow bee-eaters like to nest on ground level on their own. Rainbow bee-eaters have distinct elongated central tail feathers that are highly decorative. They like to roost with other species of birds in woods along riverbanks. The entire European continent is home to a single species of bee-eater, the European bee-eater. It spends its winters in Africa and flies north to Europe during breeding season. With a full body and resplendent plumage, the European bee-eater, also known as the golden bee-eater, is considered one of the most attractive bee-eaters. And it most certainly is very graceful during flight.
gregarious in nature, the European bee-eater behaves like the blue-tailed bee-eater during courtship, but with even more exaggerated and intimate moves. Most bee-eaters prefer open lands and fields, but there are exceptions. The red-bearded bee-eater is found in the dense rainforests of Malaysia and Sumatra. Predominantly green, with red coloration along the throat and head, the bee-eater is highly territorial and few in numbers. They like to perch quietly on a branch, behaving more like kingfishers than bee-eaters. Bee-eaters are not only highly adaptable birds, they have undergone many specializations to achieve perfection in their hunting skills. The elegant wings allow the bee-eater to turn around and hover at will. The legs and feet are small, only meant for standing. The downturned and strong bills are great weapons for capturing insects. After May, as the weather becomes warmer, the blue-tailed bee-eater gradually shows its beautiful colors in anticipation of the breeding season. The reproductive behaviors of birds are important to the continuity of the species. They sing, display, and perform all sorts of feats to attract the attention of their intended mates. Most birds are monogamous, and the parents share their work in looking after the young. Some birds are polygonous, with a male bird mating with two or more females. The mating right goes to the strong and eligible. Usually the male bird is endowed with a more colorful plumage than its female counterpart. Waders like the jacana and the greater painted snipe are, however, polyandrous. After the eggs are laid, the female birds depart, leaving the rest of the work to the drab males. Some birds engage in cooperative breeding to rear their young. The pairs of Taiwan Yuhinas build their nests and look after their young together. This increases their chances of breeding success, and risks are also diluted. The blue-tailed bee-eaters are monogamous, and together the paired birds share the work of building the nest, brooding the eggs, and rearing the young. The blue-tailed bee-eaters kick off the breeding season by looking for appropriate sites to build their nests. Bare sandy slopes or walls are preferred. The birds can be found building their nests on eroded or steep seashores, gullies, slopes by the ponds, or sandy hills. Driven by instincts and faced with limited breeding grounds, the blue-tailed bee-eaters sometimes build their nests together. This is known as colonial breeding. Bee-eating是一群鸟类在同一个地理区块一起筑巢繁衍后代。这种现象有的时候是同一种鸟有的时候是几种不同的鸟类的群聚As in any colony, individuals of a breeding colony compete with each other. To gain trust of the female bird, and to prove that one is strong and eligible, the male bird repeats its offering of insects to its mate 
throughout the entire courtship, a behavior known as courtship feeding. Courtship displays of the blue-tailed bee-eater include shaking its tail, thrusting out its chest and singing out loud, showing off its resplendent feathers and flaunting its flamboyant voice. It's stylish to be sensational. The protruding perch near the colony is the ultimate fighting ground. Everyday fights and chases happen as the birds jostle for the best spots and territories. Courtship feeding helps to cement the relationship between paired mates. After accepting the gift, the gratified female exhibits its willingness to mate. The rituals of offering and acceptance are common among the bee eaters. This male bird has offered gifts over a dozen times, but the female remains unmoved. Perhaps the offerings are too small to win her heart. The male bird finally manages to impress his mate, yet fails to consummate the relationship. This male is persistent in its pursuit of someone else's partner. The first time he was caught red-handed and chased away by the incumbent maid. Undaunted, he returns for a second time and was once again chased away. The jealous mate, agitated by the competition, takes it out on the female bird. Mating plays a significant part in the grand scheme of survival and is certainly not lacking in dramatic moments. The male returns with an offering but ends up devouring his own gift. The female plainly shows her displeasure. Some females refuse to mate after the acceptance of food. There are many instances when the female is ready for mating, but the male fails to perform and acts nonchalant. Research indicates that there are visible differences between the sexes. By analyzing the body lengths and the colors of plumage, researchers have found that male birds are more colorful, larger in size, and have longer central tail feathers. The average body length of a male bird is 30 centimeters, while a female is about 28 centimeters long, the result of evolution.
。在研究期间，我们也发现猎猴蜂虎在求偶的时候有偶外配对的情形，也就是俗称的婚外情。偶外交配通常发生在雄鸟捕食到食物回到巢区时，配对的雌鸟不在，雄鸟主动的把食物喂给其他雌鸟。有时候，其他雌鸟也会伺机过来索食。当接受食物的雌鸟表达交配意愿时，偷情就会发生了。从基因和演化的角度来看，偶外配对可以增加后代基因的奇异度和存活率，是一种智慧的行为。After the birds have paired up, construction of the nest begin in earnest. The paired birds will try out several sites before settling on the perfect spot. This could be due to unseen obstacles in the form of roots or rocks during tunneling. Some experts think that these false sites serve a purpose to distract predators. The birds take turns to tunnel. They dig with their long and downturned bills. And deftly kick the loose sand out of the holes. When a bird is busy tunneling, its partner keeps a close watch outside. The tunneling process shows the blue-tailed bee-eaters at their busiest moments. They have to defend their territory, support their mates, strengthen their relationships, and forage for food. At the same time, digging continuously, the colony is filled with fervent life and passion. It takes the bee eaters around 10 to 20 days to finish their nest holes. When the birds are able to poke their heads out of their holes, it means that their hard work is almost over. The breeding season is never without its challenges. Destruction is imminent when the rains arrive. The mating and tunneling fervor of the blue-tailed bee eaters reaches its peak during the months of May and June. Unfortunately, this is when the plum rains arrive, and the heavy rains often upset the plans of the birds. When it starts to rain heavily. The blue-tailed bee-eater will stop its tunneling. The boisterous colony falls into a singular silence. Wet feathers are not conducive to digging, and the holes may collapse during rainfall. A nesting hole is usually about 50 to 150 centimeters deep, with an oval-shaped nest chamber at the end. The chamber is where the female bird lays its eggs. 
to incubate the eggs evenly, the brooding bird rolls the eggs every 15 to 20 minutes. In the darkness of the chamber, the bird has to probe around with its bill to locate the eggs. The brooding bird relies on its partner to guard the nesting hole outside. When danger approaches, the calls of the partner will alert the sitting bird. If the bird feels threatened, it leaves the nest immediately. The male bird does not merely keep watch at the hole. He also brings food for his partner. This feeding behavior lasts throughout the whole time while the female bird is laying eggs. Once the eggs are laid, both parents share brooding duty. They take turns to sit on the eggs to ensure a successful incubation. The temperature and humidity within the chamber remain stable, a situation conducive to the incubation of the eggs. Researchers have also discovered aberrant behavior. A minority of female birds will sneak into the nest holes of other birds and lay their eggs there. The behavior is known as brood parasitism. During the egg-laying stage, it is common to see the male birds guarding the holes against these unwelcomed intruders. Interestingly, when the female bird returns to her eggs and finds that the numbers do not tally, she will expel the suspicious addition out of her nest. However, it would be interesting to find out if the egg were truly an outsider. If all things go well, the first egg will hatch after 24 to 25 days of incubation. Then comes the most dramatic moment when the chick breaks out of its shell. The parent does not toss out the shell. Instead, it continues with its brooding while breaking up the shell and consuming the bits. The shell provides extra calcium that is much needed by the parent birds. The newborn chick is naked and frail, but its large eyes and long bill are quite obvious. At this stage, the parents feed them with smaller insects and continue to provide warmth. The older chick is stronger and bigger than the rest of the brood, and it is always able to feed first. The younger and smaller chicks usually have to wait till their older siblings are full before they can get their nourishment. Smarter chicks wait patiently at the mouth of the nesting hole while its older siblings nap inside. The blue-tailed bee-eaters feed their young regularly. They return to the nest with food every 10 to 15 minutes. The diet of the chicks mirrors that of their parents. Butterflies, cicadas, and dragonflies are common fare. And the tiny chicks can swallow them whole. Despite having large bills, the chicks are sometimes presented with food that are simply too large to be swallowed. 
When this happens, they spit it out. But occasionally, the insect gets stuck in the chick's throat. If the parent is absent, this means trouble. Usually the blue-tailed bee eater succeeds in hatching all its eggs. But because of the birth order, as well as sibling competition, the development of individual chicks varies. Take this clutch as an example. The firstborn is already developing its feathers, while the youngest chick has just hatched. That is a difference of eight days in between. Through a monitor probe, researchers found that the five chicks have disappeared overnight. Intrigued by the mystery, the filming team decides to set up infrared cameras in the area to uncover the secret. Around one o'clock in the morning, the possible perpetrator shows up. A rat sniffs about the nest hole, evidently quite at home in its surroundings. It brazenly enters the hole and emerges with the parent bird, then returns to the tunnel to feed on the chicks. Twelve days after hatching, the chick now has emerging feather sheaths and can open its eyes. The chicks are able to dig around before they can even stand properly. They swallow bits of dirt to aid digestion. The chicks at this time are more active, and the competition between them becomes much more dramatic. As the parents bring home all kinds of insects to feed their young, the remains of insects, pellets and droppings increase, filling the chamber with a strong smell that could easily attract the attention of predators. The behavior of birds is strongly affected by their environment. The blue-tailed bee eaters prefer to nest colonially. During the day, the colony bristles with activities and smells making it an easy target of predators. When a predator shows up, the birds begin their urgent and relentless calls and prepare to defend themselves. The surrounding comrades take up the challenge and join in the fight. They attack from all directions and form a formidable defense. The snake, looking for an easy meal, is now trapped amidst the grass, not daring to move. The defending birds quiet down after a while. Not relaxing their vigilance, a few birds keep a close watch on the intruder. About half an hour later, the snake slowly moves again, causing the bee eaters to launch another offensive. They attack the weakest part of the snake's head with their bills. The snake tries hard to slip out of its trap. Finally, it draws up its tail to distract the frenzied attack and make its escape into the grass. Nearby, Aprinia looks on in wonder at this riveting scene. The bee eaters are able to protect their colony because they outnumber their predator. The episode shows that colonial nesting has its advantages. 在育雏期间，研究人员发现猎猴蜂虎有合作生殖的行为。在一个巢洞里，曾经被观察到有三只以上的个体进入喂养雏鸟。这些来协助喂食工作的个体被称为帮手。帮手不但能够减轻青鸟的负担，同时也可以提高雏鸟的存活率。研究也显示，在每个不同的巢区，合作生殖的比例差异很大，从百分之十到七十都有。
The blue-tailed bee-eaters usually build their colonies near water sources. These surroundings provide an abundance of insects. And when the weather is hot, the birds get cool themselves by diving into the water for a bath. Rigorous preening follows. Water bathing and rigorous preening help to cool the birds down and keep their feathers and skin clean. Of course, these are great comfort activities as well. Many other bird species are found near the bee eater's colonies. The crested mina makes full use of a bee eater's old nest hole. After much restoration and expansion, the mina raises its young in the nest. For the blue-tailed bee eater, the crested mina poses a threat. Its appearance at the colony is bound to create quite a stir. Besides keeping a close eye on the intruder, the bee eaters sometimes adopt a more aggressive strategy. When it's warm, the hoopo flies into the colony for a sand bath. Some hoopos like to loiter around the nests, looking for food. Sometimes they poke their heads into the holes inquisitively. Than a half month later, the chicks are already covered in feathers. They jostle for the best feeding spot, waiting for the parent birds. Usually the bigger chicks block the tunnel, and as a result, the weaker ones are not so well fed. This disparity increases as the chicks mature further. Sometimes the weakest sibling does not make it in the end. In nature, survival has its fair share of challenges and accidents. As the breeding season comes to a close, some parents suddenly disappear. The chicks wait anxiously at the entrance for the parents to feed them, but to no avail. These chicks eventually starve to death. Some chicks tumble out of the nest when they are jostling for food, or by accident. As a rule, the parents pay no attention to the unlucky chick, and they do not make any attempts to feed it. Its heroic efforts to return to its home turn out to be futile. Its parents look on. They too understand that the matter is out of their hands. Death looms near. The parent delivers food at the entrance, displaying antics like a seasoned acrobat. But sometimes the terrain presents unexpected challenges. After more than 20 days of intensive feeding, the chicks are now endowed with full bodies and distinctive feathers. 
the eager chicks look out of the nest all the time, filled with curiosity about the new world outside. The parent returns to the nest to make sure its children are ready. It then calls the fledglings out of the nest by luring them with food. The young birds dash out of the nest and leave their nesting life behind for good. Without the protection of the nest, the fledglings now face new dangers. They are now at their most vulnerable period. If they spend too much time near the nest, the apprehensive parents chase the fledglings away to higher perches. If faced with a predator, the fledglings would be completely defenseless. The parents continue to take care of the young birds well into two weeks after they have fledged. They also show the little ones how to find food and what to eat. They continue to feed the young for two more weeks. Fresh out of the nest, the fledgling tries to capture insects on the wings. The inexperienced youngsters often fail at their attempts, but as they mature further, they can on occasion seize the smaller insects. With the fledglings out in the open, the breeding season plunges into its most chaotic and unpredictable period. The patience and wisdom of the parents are put to the test. They have to keep an eye on the fledglings and still continue to feed those too young to leave the nest. At the same time, threats from predators increase. Fledglings are often relentless when it comes to fighting for food. Some of the young birds can be very persistent. Once they spot a parent with food returning to the nest, they rush forward to intercept the offering. Of course, the other siblings cannot resist the challenge. The behavior of the birds shows how competitive survival can be. Nature decrees that only the fittest can survive. As the breeding season draws to a close, most of the parent birds are exhausted. Their drab and ragged plumage bears testimony to the hardship of the breeding season. Near the end of July, Summer reaches its peak, and most of the chicks have fledged. The once bustling nesting colony now becomes a quiet place. The fledglings try their best to look for food during the day, 
and then return to roost with their parents at night. They follow their daily routine until the northern winds arrive. By roosting colonially every evening, the blue-tailed bee-eaters are able to defend themselves collectively. They usually favor forests by the lakes or where it is less windy. of August, all the juvenile birds have formed their beautiful plumage. They prey on insects with ease over the fields, showing that they are almost as capable as their parents when it comes to flying and hunting. The greatest differences at this point between the juveniles and their parents are that the juveniles are lighter in color and their central tail feathers are shorter. After September, the cold northern winds begin their voyage southwards. Smaller birds arrive in Jinmen, while the bee-eaters gear up for their annual migration to the south. During dusk, small clusters of bee-eaters gather near the shore and take off in the moonlight. Under the lead of the parents, they fly southwards. There is no banding evidence to indicate where the bee-eaters are headed when they migrate to the south from Jinmen. Records show that they are found in Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and India. Their wintering spots are concentrated along the equatorial regions. When the filming team was in Malaysia, they encountered a group of blue-tailed bee-eaters on their way to the south. The group, consisting of more than 10 individuals, just happened to stop over at a nesting colony of the blue-throated bee-eaters. They made a brief stop before continuing their journey. At their wintering spots, the blue-tailed bee-eaters pursue their own interests during the day. They can be seen perching alone or in pairs on electrical wires or branches, awaiting their prey. In the evening, they tend to roost together.风虎特别喜欢在开阔裸露的地方挖洞营巢to improve the stability of the breeding sites, the Jinmen National Park has undertaken the task of revamping old sites, as well as creating suitable new sites to attract the bee-eaters. Park interpreters also help visitors to understand the bee-eaters better. Conservation efforts are usually quite successful. After sprucing up the old sites, the bee-eaters are using them again. This also shows that the bee-eaters are highly loyal to their breeding sites. New sites created at Rushan and Triangle Fort have attracted hundreds of bee-eaters to build their colonies there. There are over 10,000 species of birds in the world but none has been able to avoid the impact of human-related activities. Migratory birds are like the Earth's messengers. They return year after year to the same location, exhibiting a strong loyalty to their habitats. 
they are considered credible indicator species of a healthy environment. It is not mere coincidence that the blue-tailed bee-eaters choose Jinmen as their summer haven. Suitable breeding sites are of course important, but the surrounding vegetation plays an important role. The natural habitats of Jinmen, with its diverse vegetation, support many species of insects and ensure their large populations. These are major considerations for the blue-tailed bee-eaters. Every year, the blue-tailed bee-eaters return to Jinmen for a new breeding season. This brings diversity to the island's natural environment and delivers an important message. Jinmen is a beautiful, bountiful, and friendly place. Elegant and agile, the bee-eater shows a wide range of engaging behavior. It is simply nature at her most creative. The bee-eater reminds us of nature's beauty. It is our common responsibility to ensure that these lovely birds are able to live in harmony and balance in nature.